Right now, we are going to take you back to 1941. Historian Helen Gregory is with you. Helen, why are we going back to that year? Well, Ashwin, we've done a number of anniversaries this year, and this is another one, but it doesn't... The figures don't end neatly in O. This is an 81st anniversary. Oh, OK. All right, so it's important. That's why we need historians to celebrate things that we might have missed. And I had never heard of the Pensacola, but it's always a lovely word. I've, it feels like it's in the background of my memory. You hear the word Pensacola. I didn't know of its, of its military significance, though. So can you tell us what that is? Well, it was a ship that was part of a very important convoy that came to Brisbane in December 1941. And the event is usually known as the arrival of the Pensacola convoy, of which the United States ship Pensacola was the lead. And, in fact, the Pensacola had already been quite busy around the Pacific even before she arrived in Brisbane on the 22nd of December 1941. Everything else. And... But by the early morning of the 22nd of December, the Brisbane Harbour pilot, who was a civilian, went aboard Pensacola to escort her and to Brisbane. The rest of the convoy didn't immediately follow. And so she boarded, she um, moored at Hamilton Wharf just after 12.30pm on the 22nd of December. And the anniversary we're marking will be commemorated by the unveiling of a plaque at Brett's Wharf to commemorate this arrival. and But the rest of the convoy, which had been called Task Force South Pacific, remained anchored off the pile light for a little while. In 1941, the United States president sent Pensacola and her convoy towards the Philippines with the idea of reinforcing the Philippines. Now, this was before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, so it was perfectly, I think, clear that the United States was expecting trouble in the Pacific. They just didn't expect it to be Pearl Harbour, I think. Well, and Sorry, you go. And so when she was on her way to Manila with the convoy, Pensacola got new orders to come back and she crossed the equator on the 5th of December 1941 and, of course, on the morning of the 7th of December was told that the J Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbour and the United States was now at war. Anyway, she kept going towards Manila till the 9th of December, but clearly there were going to be other troubles, so she was told to turn around, bring the convoy back to Pearl Harbour, and then they were <clears throat> diverted to Brisbane via Suva in Fiji. Do you know why the change in orders came from going to Pearl Harbour to go to Brisbane? I think perhaps both the Australian and United States governments were very concerned about Japan in other parts of the Pacific and it possibly was a matter of spreading out the forces for a bigger coverage. So that's a good introduction to the setting, the atmosphere of the relationship at that time. Take us back into now the story of the Pensacola. It gets orders to come to Brisbane. What's, what happens next? Well, it's on its way to Brisbane and... Two Australian ships, HMAS Canberra and HMAS Perth, were at Newstead Wharf on, in December 1941. They were then sent out into Moreton Bay and partly, I think it was, to see when the Pensacola convoy would arrive and where exactly it was. And this is something I hadn't realised, but some of our ships and the Pensacola had planes so planes went up to see where everybody else was in early December 1941. On, on that point, I wonder how in, interoperable our ships were with this. Could they communicate with each other? Did they use the same frequency on radio? It must have been hard to get these two um, unfamiliar navies to suddenly connect with each other. Well, that's one of the reasons I wonder if that's the reason why Canberra and Perth were sent out to to look for Pensacola and her convoy. Mm. I'm not sure about that. A naval, a naval person will yeah. probably know about the state of communications, but I don't. It's a very expensive alternative to a phone call, but may have been necessary back then. That's right. And, of course, there were limited navigation aids. For instance, the um, Cape Morton Lighthouse wasn't brightly flashing. It was on a setting called Loom, which was a diffuse light, so it couldn't easily be seen for miles and miles and miles. So I would imagine the navigation was quite a, yes. quite a thing for these big ships. And um, HMAS Moresby was a, appointed to escort Pensacola. 
and it launched more planes to check for en enemy submarines because that was always a worry that there could be submarines. So everybody was checking for everything else. And But by the early morning of the 22nd of December, the Brisbane Harbour pilot, who was a civilian, went aboard Pensacola to escort her and the, to Brisbane. The rest of the convoy didn't immediately follow. And so she boarded, she um, moored at Hamilton Wharf just after 12.30 p.m. on the 22nd of December. And the anniversary we're marking will be commemorated by the unveiling of a plaque at Brett's Wharf to commemorate this arrival. And But the rest of the convoy, which had been called Task Force South Pacific, remained anchored off the par light for a little while.